This is Inside Outlands. I'm your host, Nat Ryle, and joining me today are my co-host, Jack Churchill and Ace Mason. What's going on, guys? Good evening. Hey, how are you? So we're, we're going to do something different. I, I did say co-host. Um, I think uh, I've done a lot of interviews. We've done 20 plus interviews here. I kind of want to just change the format here for the next couple of weeks. We're going to do kind of a topic to topic discussion, bounce from one Outlands or UO uh, topic to another, uh, give it some discussion. We'll do some new interesting things with uh, with uh, player feedback too and try to work out in the show with, with more discussion from you guys. So uh, that's kind of the direction we're taking the show. Just gonna, We'll still do interviews. Like We'll still get people on here. I, we'll grab guests when there's a topic that we... Like, I don't know, if we got a big PvP topic, we'll go get Akasha again. And it's basically be uh, us getting to know each other and you guys getting to know us. And then we'll bring in guests once uh, once it makes sense again. So, you know, with that, let's first, I guess, let's, let's quickly introduce Jack and Ace. So, so, Jack, why don't you tell everyone, you know, who you are and, and where you're from in you. Good morning or afternoon, whatever this is while you're listening. Uh, I'm the GM of the Beard Brothers started in november here on outlands before that last i really played uo was siege perilous back in 2001 2002 time frame yeah and uh i'm here with uh you militia currently and and playing a few other characters battered around that people recognize um but i've played with you for years since cat skills originally um but i started on osi in 99 2000 and i've played free shards forever you know, I, the, all the IPYs and the Ancorps and the Relpors and everything basically leading up to uh, Outlands. So I've I've played in quite a lot of uh, uh, roles throughout UO. Yeah, I mean, I know both you guys pretty well. Uh, me and Ace played together with, uh, with the Orcs. Lots of time together in Classic UO Discord, troubleshooting players and, and shit like that. And of course, uh, Jack's been my you know, first... First co guildmate and then guild leader and uh, beard brothers. So, um, you know, we have a lot of experience here. So hopefully we can tackle some of these topics. And you know, like, like I said, where we're where we're missing expertise, we'll we'll go grab it to kind of fill in our gaps. You know, uh, first up on the docket though is IDOC changes. Um, I, I think the way the IDOCs are now, the one complaint I always hear about is the the timer is too long. It's what twelve hours, right? I believe it's 12 to 24 once it goes IDOC. I thought they got rid yep. of 24, and now it's just up to 12. So it'll go IDOC, and then it's out of window for 12 hours, and then it's 12 to 24, or 12 hours oh, after yeah. that first 12. Yeah, so I mean, the big complaint now, despite all the like regular stuff that goes on the IDOC, which is loot scripts, um, killing stealthers, and all that, like the way IDOC currently goes down is... It's a random time. The house drops, and then whoever loots the best wins the loot. And then there could be PvP where people are. It's not even often who loots the best. It's who has the best gatherer script or loot script to target the shelf first. Uh, I've heard of. I've never seen it because I don't do IDOCs. But from other guildmates I've heard, there's people that actually have loot scripts that'll gate to their courtyard ban anyone that comes in and drop it in a chest yeah i mean there, there's some crazy ones i i actually have one myself um that i use to, i'll admit it um that you put in the cereals for the items you want to loot as soon as it the house falls it tries to grab those items and recalls the shelter island um so as long as you don't get killed overnight you know if you're hiding there it's it's completely afk there's nothing to do I, i've done i've done scavenger clients where i put in the stuff i want before the scavenger but it's not really a script yeah i think scavenger might be a little slower than some of the scripts i'm not don't quote me on that but i think uh i think that's why people have leaned more towards the scripts um but yeah like you said there's no there's no pvp the only pvp you're gonna get is uh killing afk naked stealthers yeah i think the only uh i doc i've done was sir archelot's house drop event and i put stuff on scavenger ran through I'd say I got about 5% of what I was aiming for. Yeah, the one IDOC I did, I won about everything. Just about everything. But it was a shitty IDOC. There was like three other guys there. Uh, there's Reading general chat today, there seems to be two points of view. Uh, you know, At least maybe a couple more than that. But 
One one is like IDOCs have been the same for 20 years, you know, maybe different assistants, different clients, but the mechanics are all basically the same. And there's players that really eat that up and are really good at it and don't want any drastic changes to it. And then you probably have the group of players that just want all the same mechanics, but the, the window down less so they have more interaction, right? So it's three hour window, not a 24 hour window. And then what we're going to get to is Owen's proposal, which is, he's not even, it's not really like a refined idea. It's like, it's an initial spark of an idea basically that uh, just drastically changes everything to do with IDOX. Yeah. I, th- I think the whole IDOX system is interesting because like you said, it's, it's been the same for 20 years, whatever. Um, and, and people, you know, that's their style of play. They like doing IDOX. That's what they do. They run the map. They look for houses. They, you know, spend the time to get a perfect timer on them and, you know, and are willing to PVP and do that. Um, you know, really the problem stems back to scripts, even doing that, even running the map, you don't have to click anymore. You just run and the scripts click for you and tell you, and they'll mark for you if you want them to. And, um, it's, it's really, it's really tough, um, to be competitive. Uh, there's a lot of guys that, that spend a lot of time and I, I get, um, on second age, I used to do run with a IDOT crew and we would get perfect timers on them. We'd literally sit there and camp them and find exactly when it went. And that was a server that had an exact timer. You knew whatever it was, 12 or 24 or 18 hours after when IDOC, it was going to fall at that minute. Um, you could time it almost a minute. You had to account for server saves. Um, but we'd, we'd get up, you know, set our alarms for 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., you know, whatever, and text each other and say, hey, get up, we're doing this IDOC, let's go um, and fight it off and clear it out. And, and we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, so there's there's a lot that has changed here and lots that, that's the same. So it's it's going to be a hard balance. I don't, uh, I, I have no UO experience to fall back on. You know, I have I have this one year playing Outlands and I can tell you right now that IDOC's fucking blue. Uh, I don't really care about your vet experience, like, these loot scripts and auto the system and how it works now is just not how a game should work. Um, I do understand why it's fun, but we've had a couple of really badass ones. We're fighting around our guild house and lots of PVP trying to control the area. Um, but that's a, just not how most of them go. Um, and, and it's, if one of these guys that has all the right scripts gets right around there, you, I mean, you're, you're, you're shit out of luck. Although there's a lot of loot, right? Like he can't get all of it. So you're going to get some of it. Like, like Jack's 5% at Sir Bart's, but, um, Archalots. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sir Bart, Archalot. So there's just, I would be open-minded to anything that, that changes how it works now and gets rid of the, the scripting ability in it and makes it more of a fight and makes it involve more players. But I can, I guess I can understand resistance to, something that's been around that long. So my take, like I said, I don't do IDOX. I don't have enough play time to do IDOX personally. I mean, great. Some do. I don't, but if it's the scripts, there's one way to fix that. And I think we're talking about that later. Uh, There's, you know, the PVP is amazing. We've had huge fights around our guild house. Like uh, Nat Rao said, where, it turned into a bloody, bloody war. One time it was, I think, I saw Trin there, and you don't ever see them off their boats, so that was amazing. But it doesn't happen, and the, the only reason those turn into such bloodbaths is because they knew, everybody in the server knew we were trying to build up a huge city in the desert. So that's why they came, because they were hoping to place a house and take the ransom for selling it to us. Oh yeah, I I wholeheartedly agree, and I you know I don't know what the solution is. I think there's been a lot of interesting proposals. Um, you know, the, people keep saying it needs to be an exact timer. I I get where they're coming from as, from a work standpoint and a playtime standpoint, but then what happens is you get one or two people that have the exact timer. You got other people that are, have an idea. You know, they're working for it too. Someone comes in and wipes you all out two seconds before it drops and takes all the loot. So. It's it's a delicate balance, I think, that has to be struck. Um, you know, on UOF, they made some drastic changes. I thought they were awful, personally, um, for you guys that don't know. Um, they put half the loot on the... I'm sorry. They put half the loot in a queue, 
that would then randomly drop on monsters throughout the world. And then the other half of the loot, they'd spawn like Ettons or Ratmans or something when the house dropped, and you had to kill those to get the loot off of them. And it was just awful. See, I, that, that sounds cool to me. <laughs> I can see why it'd be awful, though, I guess. So let's get into Owen's idea. He, I mean, at least where I understand it, he basically wants, um, you know, the siege system that they just put in has this gate that you have to kind of bash down to get through. So using that tech, I guess, they would have a chest drop with uh, that you have to bash down. And then once it, once it's down, all the reward gets distributed using their other tech, the uh, the distribution chest. And that would happen with anyone that's gotten on the chest. And I guess you have higher priority if you've done more damage. Maybe. Uh, like I said, that's the initial spark of my idea. It would need to have lots of refinement and rules and tweaks and whatever else they want to do, do, do to it. So. Yeah, I think some of the fun about IDOX, though, is like you you can see what's there. You know, and not always because some of it's just chest and whatever, but you know, you see that rare on the table that you really want to grab or, you know, you see this or you see that and you work with other people, even though you might not know them, just some random guy. Hey, I want, I want to get this item. Okay. You want that item? Let's go for them. We'll switch. We'll do whatever, you know? So there is some tact to it. So I'm not totally sold on this idea. I know she's just flushing it out, kind of throwing it out there, but uh, it's, it wouldn't be my cup of tea, I guess I'll say. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like it, I mean, you could put a uh, put a ten minute w- delay on it, and it turns into a war. And if people are after the PvP and not just, oh my god! I mean, uh, Lunk tells uh, Anarchy, who tells Pone, who tells it just goes on and on, and all of a sudden, you've got two hundred people there fighting over this uh, moving crate. Yeah, people want field PvP. Here you go. I'm not saying that's the right way to go, but it would be a really interesting way. I'll take a different tact, and this is going to be extremely unpopular. I saw one person said, why are we profiteering off of people that quit? Let's have an item sink and a gold sink, and it just poofs away with the house. Okay, I can get that. And then another idea I saw, once it's in the IDOC window, you can cast Earthquake to take five minutes off the timer. So... You can't continually cast it. It's 50 mana, and it hurts everyone around you. can't cast it while there's blues around because you'll go gray and red. But it's a way to control the timer. If you're the only person there, you can start speeding it up. If if it's your guild, you can rotate. And if you don't mind taking counts, you can completely and utterly own that IDOC from the time it goes IDOC. Well, you could also combine that with his idea, and that's some of the loot just goes poof and uh, doesn't dump back in the economy and a lot of loot. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of things that I think uh, people have brought up that are interesting. The earthquake thing. Um, I know on rel poor, it's kind of off topic, but we had, you know, gates, this was factions, but you had gates, you had to break down, you know, kind of like the siege system here. So I think there's a lot of cool things you could do with the IDOC system. Um, but I think you're, you're going to have to balance it to, appease the old school hardcore eye dockers and uh you know people that want to get into the scene that maybe not have the play time or the the time to get up at 4 a.m or, or whatever the case may be so I, th- I think there's some cool options um it'll be interesting to see how some of them get flushed out in the upcoming weeks or months the the 24 hour timer is is a weird thing I, I thought that would have changed shortly after they put it in with the amount of complaints they had against it i don't know what the what the positives are to having such a long and random timer, but they've kept it in. They kept it in this long. It, I mean, it's not changed since they adjusted that many, many months ago. I think the reason why it went in was to avoid the people knowing the exact timer. And then there's no fighting because only four or five people have it. I think I don't know for a fact on it, obviously. Yeah. Or it keeps, you know, that big PVP kill from coming in sweeping everyone out right at the last second and then um you know then you get nothing for sitting there for 12 14 hours you know so um i i think it's i think it's interesting i think it's good i've played on servers with random timers and with exact timers so i don't really have a preference one way or another on that that point yeah this is not going to make uh anyone really happy 
uh, other than the people that just hate it. Be, I'm, not, I'm not even unhappy with it. I just don't do iDocs. But, uh, and that's probably where a lot of the player base is. And, and Owen's chain is going to make anyone that loves iDocs now just really, really upset because it won't, it won't work anywhere near the same way. Right. It's, it's ultimately going to be a compromise where both parties walk away thinking they got screwed. So <laughs> that means everyone wins, right? Exactly. Successful yeah. compromise. And interesting enough, all three of our topics today have to do with, with scripts or in some form or fashion. So hmm. there's, uh, I didn't do that on purpose either, but that's, that's what the community is, is always kind of harping on it is scriptability and, and even playing field. So, I mean, our, our next topic is, um, camming and there's a really good post on the forums, um, and it, he basically has a comprehensive solution to camming. And we can go over this in detail, but the, the gist of it is um, to actually police it, make a make a hard and fast rule that it's illegal, and then to combine that with harsh punishment so people, you know, when they actually get caught, they don't uh, they don't continue. To, so it's kind of a two pronged attack on. Right. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, there has to be a clear and fast rule, and and Owen kind of had to kind of tried to take a stand i think earlier in the year um with his you know 18 tile type of whatever you got to be in range of each other and this and that and um i know so that's shown that's easily worked around right yeah i mean i I think in the end we've all kind of realized that's kind of bullshit or hey i'm gonna park one in maz one in nucero and then i'm gonna play a third character in inferno or whatever okay they're not in the same dungeon i'm still camming whatever so i think I think it needs to be dealt with hard and fast and and I like where he's going with this post that you know it needs to be actively monitored actively jailed. I understand Lithius and Owen can't be on 24/7. Um but I think it's getting to the point where they're going to have to enlist help of people that can be trusted either that aren't playing super active on the shard but still want to be involved or you know getting some more trusted people in like they've, they've tried with some Sears and things like that. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be a very often thing. I mean, you go around once a day, once every other day, you find a bunch of guys sitting there naked in a dungeon, not doing anything. Uh, they're probably a cam. It's Owen's sandbox and Luthius's sandbox. They can do whatever they want. They can kick the sand on them. Yeah. Owen says he has to deal with the angry, e- angry messages. I've, it's probably not able for him to block them. I don't know. It's it's got to be something. I we just randomly found a mini right before we started recording. Found the mini. Ten seconds. Uh, had two individuals not associated with any major guilds anymore come, and they weren't. I just saw one of them in Pulma, literally a minute ago, and they left Pulma, ran to Nucero, and were there. Okay. The guy, the other person is a well-known cam bot. Doesn't hide it. His cam's his same name. And yes, all the major guilds have done it or done variations on it. I know BB. We had one guy that went and cammed the mains. Uh, yep, he had nine characters. He would log them in, log them out, check the main, log them out, rotate them through. He never sat there, but he'd log in every hour and check every single main that was in window. Ace, uh, you were in Wrecked and Lunk and a few of those other guilds. I'm sure, certain you guys cammed, even though I've never gotten it confirmed. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there were some guys that cammed. I know there were some some guys that actively scouted. You know, they'd run the dungeons and stuff, but uh, there were guys I'm sure Nothing that were... Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no, but there were guys logging in and out of characters. Um, you know, ask me their names, honestly, I, and I'm not even trying to cover for anyone. I don't remember. Um, I don't, you know, I, I got enough on my mind. I'm not trying to worry yeah, about no. that, but there's, there's some interesting, there's some interesting points in here. Um, one of them was deduct prestige from the characters guild. So um, Rydia actually had a really good comment on that. Uh, guilds that have, how shall we say, looser recruiting standards, uh, BB, we have a fairly open recruit policy. So they get an... And then they go and cam, and all of a sudden BB's losing a bunch of prestige, and it's all, uh, you know, a backdoor attack. All right, I, yeah, very, very good, very good points. Um, you know, and that's why I, we need the we need the conversation. Sorry for cutting you off. 
Oh, no, no. That's, I mean, uh, actually nothing I really thought about. But, you know, being in you, again, who's got a pretty open recruitment policy, we've we've seen a lot of those backdoor attacks over the years. So I, I'm surprised it didn't pop into my head. But, um, you know, try, trying to get a guild held accountable in some fashion. Maybe it's not prestige. Maybe there's some other way to do it. Um, you know, randomizing the bosses. Um, I There was one about doors on the boss that you have to knock down just to get in to check the boss yeah i like that that. actually yeah yeah that's one thing i this uh, so the the one solution that's in a lot of this is going to take out the the automation so i know um we put in the um what do you call those the custodians and that's kind of an end game way to to try and stop uh ghost gaming and, and the like and uh, and stealth and stealthing up and now all that did with those make the people move outside the boss room. They have to macro moving in or log in and log out and check it manually. Yeah, I've been told that there's a script that'll actually avoid the custodian. I've tried getting my hands on it so I could send it to Luthius or Owen and say, "Look, here's what they're doing." Uh, I haven't had any luck yet, but I'm going to keep trying. Any any solution that requires a, an actual person to do work is never going to be the best solution. I mean, I know that's what we're asking them to do is, is to run through and get rid of cameras and, and actually make a rule. But when you have a small staff like this, like you're asking a lot. And now, now you want them to police this, you want them to police bad scripts and AFK miners and on and on it goes with, with things you can, you can't catch. Uh, you can't detect with like, Oh, the automation. You have to have a, a person run through dungeons and, and find these um, which is why oh. I think he has the second part of this, which is strong enforcement with a uh, strong punishment so that they don't have to keep doing that work over and over. But either way, I mean, custodians, I think were really, really cool. It was going to do it with automation, but it, it's just not working. So they got to keep throwing things at it. And another thing we get from Owen a lot is that no other, no other shard in the past, like this is this is not a new issue. It's not an Outlands issue. It's a UO issue. It's always been around. There's always been ghost caming and caming. Like it's a thing players have to deal with. And we're competitive. I mean, BB's competitive, and we're a bunch of shitty PVMers. Uh, you know, people want to they want to win. They want to progress. And if the tool is there, that they're going to use it in some form or fashion. So here's an interesting idea that was messaged to me. It avoids the outdoor cam, uh, especially outdoor, outside AFK cam. Uh, if you're going to spawn it, you can run down with a character, spawn it, mark a rune, and it only works while that spawned boss is up. Then you go recall out, drop that rune, everyone gates in, now you've avoided that cam, if a raider finds it, they can still raid it. Uh, basically, you don't have to run down on PvP and PvM. You can defend it easier. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I've, I may or may not have partaken in a couple of raids of bosses before in my past. So, right. I mean, that's not uh, obviously. There's a lot of flushing out to do, but that's not a terrible question. It gives you, as the summoning guild, maybe a little bit more of an advantage to get down there. You know, you can recall in. It's, it's basically a guild-only recall ruin, right? Um, you know, essentially, because you're going to lock it down in, in your guild house or something. Um, so you can recall your PVMers in, not be seen by a cam bot. You know, if you get wiped, you can recall in PVPers. You got a little bit of a an advantage there. You can all go in as a group um, and not get funneled in one by one and, and picked off. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I, it's not a terrible idea. I, I don't mind it. You know, and you can still get raided. Just someone has to find it organically, right? It has to find you down there organically. You know, because I think the second part of this is people stashing a cam bot at the second level gate, you know, and oh, here comes five BBs coming in. There must be something going on. I'm going to go down there, you know, or I'm going to call my guys and we're going to go down there. It's not just about camming the boss room. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, so we did a, we did a protest where we, we thought that the uh, cam sucks. So we're going to, we're going to make these P- PK radars. And piss everyone off. It's legal per the rules. We're going to make them. Everyone will be mad. And then they'll go change the rule. It was supposed to be up two or three days. And here we are, I think almost two months later, the rules not changed. PK radars are still allowed by the rules. 
we don't do them frequently anymore because everyone has basically given up on the protest, and that's okay. Can Can you explain this? I mean, it, a so, little more detail. I'm I'm out of the loop on this one, I guess. So I place a character in mausoleum, hidden in different areas. Sometimes I get found and get killed. Sometimes I don't, and then I go to bed. Anytime a red comes on tracking, it alerts guild. Uh, sometimes they go kill them. Sometimes they just leave the dungeon. And it's 100% legal because it's not camming for me. I don't ever go into mausoleum when my cam is there. I rarely go there anyway because I honestly don't like that dungeon. Gotcha. So essentially, I did the same thing early in the, the chart before Owen came up with the 18 tile thing. But I was doing it for yeah. myself, obviously. So essentially the same thing, but you're just not putting two characters in the same dungeon. You put one in Moz and go farm Inferno. Someone else yeah, puts one in yeah. Inferno, go farm Moz or whatever the case may be. Right. That's with exactly people, it. You just, you just get someone You get someone that never wants to go in that dungeon. So, you know, I, I hate Aegis, so I'm going to do Aegis. You know, or this guy hates this dungeon. So then there's never an issue. He's never going to go in that dungeon with that bot on. So you're never breaking the rule. Hey, but this sucks. Like this, this stops natural, natural engagement of players using AFK. I, I don't know. There's nothing cool about this. Like it shouldn't be. A th- and so I think we would rather have the rule be, be hard and fast, but then they have to detect it and find it. And that all takes and manpower and, and yeah, enforcement. And that's, yeah, that's the part that's hard. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is the progression, progressive penalty. Okay. First jail, the character, Second, jail that whole account. It done. You, five characters knocked out. That hurts some people. I know a couple people that only play on one account, and if they get jailed on that account, that whole account, they're done. And you can do that for our next topic, recall miners and resource gatherers. Third, jail the entire account group. Now you're stuck out for seven days, and you've got a seven-day vacation from UO. Right, yeah. I, there, I think there's a balance there. And, you know, Owen oh, one time... I don't know if it was in anger or jest or sarcasm or whatever said to me that he's in the business of retaining players. You know, we got into it about something. So I think there has to be a, sh- a, a balance struck there. You know, we don't want a shard of empty people. We don't also don't want a shard of cheaters. Um, so it's, it's, yeah. it's a delicate balance and I don't envy the line that he's got to walk. Um, but well, he's, I, he's not wrong. That there is a limited no. pool of EO players, and if he bans all of them for camming and script, you know, AFK script mining, we're, we're left with no one. So he's he's not wrong, but with, with the with the harsh punishment rules, people like us three, we're not going to do it. You know, right. to, to actually risk a character and account like that permanently. Maybe I'll go do it one time or twice, but I'm not going to do it a third time. Hell no, not if that's what that means. You know, um. I'm the other so, part in here was the uh, limiting um, characters in dungeons. They had that system being worked on. It never got put in the game, but to where you could only have like one account group uh, in a dungeon at a time. Yeah, I think that's interesting too. Um, you know, as someone that's played solo um, from time to time, you know, dying in a dungeon can could be could be a big hit. Um, and if I can run a second character down there and res myself and get my stuff back real quick. Um, it's, it's, can be a lifesaver, but there's sacrifices that I guess have to be made to, to level the playing field in the long run. So it, I'm not against it. I've just, I can see valid reasons why you would want multiple characters from your account group in a dungeon. Yeah. His post says continue to develop and launch the one player per account group dungeon system. One only, only access to one dungeon at a time. Yeah, so you can't even have a character in the new player dungeon while you're AFK watching something in Inferno. <clears throat> so, yeah, it'd be hey, interesting how they lumped a new player dungeon in with that, you know, So since so many people just macro up to 70 in it. I'd- so Ace, I can definitely, uh, I definitely, uh, what's the right word, empathize with your solo player comment. I have to take a step back and remember that yeah, I've got, you know, 50 active players between Guild and Alliance that I can call on pretty much any time. Someone's on. Someone can come help me. But that's not the case for most people. So thanks for that perspective. Yeah, but we would adjust. Um, I mean, maybe it makes the game harder, but 
at the sake of if that helps get rid of camming and scripting and all this, then it might be worth the the adjustment to play. Yeah, um, and, and that's kind of what I said. You know, if yeah. it lo- if it gives us longevity of the shard, or if it, it evens the playing field long term, people can adjust. Um, you're probably going to get them, drag them kicking and screaming, um, but they'll adjust. And you know, just just kind of go back real quick because I I thought of it and then forgot and we kind of moved on. You know, the the kind of PK alert scripts and things are just exacerbated by the dungeon gates, I think, which a lot of people are split on that that whole topic. Um, recalling and gating in and out of dungeons, the dungeon gates running all the way from level one to. And that's probably a topic from another day, but I just kind of wanted to throw it in there just as a kind of food for thought. Yeah, I mean, they can tackle this a lot of different ways. Uh, I'm sure they're more open to anything that, that helps um, helps them do this without having to actually run through every single thing and, and find cameras. So you combine that with with uh, allow one, one, one person done at a time. You change up the, uh, the gates. You start actually making a real dent in how the whole system works. But... Um, I think Luthis really loves those. Um, I don't have any experience with other shards, so if they went away, I would probably not be happy. I, I'm just used to that's all I've ever done is have have the gates like this. So, but I mean, I, just like you said with a single solo player, I, I would adjust if that if that made the shard better. I guess. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. Um, IPY, uh, how did they do it? They had recall zones where you could recall out and in. Or no, recall in, but you couldn't run, recall out. You had to run out, I believe. And then traditional UO, you could recall in and out, gate in and out, wherever you wanted in a dungeon. So I, I think going back to that is a little extreme. Um, I like that there's a little bit of challenge getting in and out of dungeons. Um, but the, the gates are just so easy mode 90% of the time in, in the dungeons here um, that you get no PvP, really. So I say Dark Mire is pretty much the hardest uh dungeon to get in and out and you don't see reds down there it's funny i wonder why because that dungeon's cancer honestly god damn uh, i hate poison that, i love it that's why i, I love that it. dungeon <laughs> yeah it's yeah I don't, I don't know any other dungeon but i know dark mire yeah, yeah we know you didn't know where the gate on new zero three was <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not oh, actually good this game i just like talking about it yeah um Really, Darkmire is the hardest dungeon to get out of. If you've got a competent group of reds, they are going to be able to block you. And that goes for many dungeons. Uh, that or does not go for many dungeons. Yeah, I think uh, I think if you can't get out on level 3, you're pretty screwed with that boulder trap. Um, I, oh, I think yeah. Ma- I think Maw's, even though the gate is so close to the Elder Vampire Room, it's such a choke point. That that one makes that one interesting sometimes, and you got elder vamps and countesses and everything. That one can get interesting sometimes too. Ossuary is good also because it's got the catacomb unless you go up and play with the skeleton dragons. Oh god, those mummies too with their disease. <laughs> Honestly, I would be in favor of seeing more gates that are kind of traps like that. And yeah, are, are I'm you a worried blue. about about how uh, how does this affect camming again? I, guess I, uh, I have no how. idea. We, we've gone off topic a little bit. Uh, yeah, it was it was kind of with your with your PK alerts. You know, by by the time the PK alerts get off, you can run back and hit a gate oh, and get right, out right. before they even get down to you. So, yeah, you're <laughs> thanks for thanks for reeling us in, Nat. <laughs> no, no, I, that does make sense now. Uh, yeah, let's move to our next topic then. I think we've we've uh, hammered this one home. Um, and just to, to reiterate here, we're not really like down on this necessarily it, it is it is a thing with you grow it'd be a thing if you went to another shard like it's not unique to outlands um so i, I don't really envy owen and luthi's having to figure this stuff out uh to make all of us happy but uh we're here to discuss it and kind of bring to you what the community is talking about and uh hopefully with a couple of solutions maybe um so the next topic is script mining and really kind of cool is lately the crackdown on afk miners i love which is it so, I love it too. It's it's hilarious to watch because you get they all come out and talk, so you know who they all are. Um, and, and we haven't really done a very good job explaining what each issue is, but there's a there's a, you can recall mine. So you you basically you have a script in Steam that will recall you around. You actually could do the same thing, but uh, you 
you recall a round and where you recall you mine then you recall somewhere else and keep mining and then it comes back and drops off your ore uh then it shoots you back out and you keep recalling and mining you make a whole loop this is how most of them work uh and there's usually something in there to stop stop the whole script when the capture comes up which you had to put a capture in every every 20 minutes you know you would like a sound so you would come back over you know maybe you're at work you don't you hear the sound while you're doing your work and you tab over and you type in the captcha and then go back to working and it keeps mining for you so uh even more nefarious you can combine this with all like internet capture tools and screen reading and i don't know what these guys do but they someone out there has probably broken the capture system i don't know how widespread it is uh they adjusted it once because someone broke it and it got it got out and then um I don't know that anyone's like fully broken what's currently in the game. I, I mean, someone's probably done it. Cheaters are pretty good, but uh, and then the crackdown from Owen is, uh, I'm assuming it's him, but he's basically like going out and it lets, he sees a capture go off. He waits five, 10 minutes for you to start back up and starts a conversation. No one responds. That's your AFK mining, which is still against the rules, even though you've done the capture and then he jails you. They get all that right, guys? Yeah, so I've used the recall miner. I wasn't very good at it. And honestly, going back to the jailing uh, point we were talking about earlier, I have zero desire to have any of my characters ever jailed, so I sat there and watched him recall, and it was just faster for me to run around with a bunch of pack horses and load them up. But I can only do that for about 20 minutes before I fall asleep and get bored. Right. Um, you know, this, this is one I'm, I'm really... I'm torn. I'm, 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 I don't know. From, from a person that can't stand resource gathering in UO, I think it's the worst thing ever in any game. And crafting's not that far behind it. Um, I, I think I tried to make a lumberjack and I got to 52.2. Like it was that miserable. And I just said, F it. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, so having a script that makes it less tedious, it, you know, at first glance, it's like, oh my god, let's do it. Let's go. There's a CAPTCHA. I'm not AFK. I'm going to put it in this CAPTCHA. That's why it's there, to prevent people from AFKing it. If I put that in, I'm good. You know. Um, then there's the whole piece of economy balance and, and this and that. And I've actually heard stories of jo- Owen or Luthius or, or Expo showing up as a wisp. Because people have things that'll alert them when they find another character on screen. So you show up as a wisp, it doesn't alert you, they can jail you. Um, you know, things like this that people are going to extremes. Um, so oh, but it's really I, easy. You put it in the tracking, right? You get a player on track, you recall back to your, your house. That's like, that's not hard to code in. I could probably do it. Right, exactly. So people are doing this to get around. Okay, if someone comes on screen, if Owen comes on my screen, I'm going home, script stops, we're done. But, you know, the the staff has started showing up as an orc or as a wisp or as, you know, something that's a mob that you wouldn't necessarily have in your script, which I think I is know hilarious. There's talking with another individual who's well known for being accused of uh, scripting everything, uh, they've had Owen show up as a mob that's not even in Outlands, but it's in the art file still. So you would never have an, a way to get that uh, character ID without uh, – I'm sure there's a way. I'm not very smart with computers. So I mean, you could data mine it and find it, but there's characters that have never been used in the de- art files that he's shown up as. Right, yeah. There's, I mean, there's there's thousands of animations. Some use, you know, some use, some not use. So you can find them. You can go and fiddle and find them. But to put all – fuck, 10,000 or whatever it is – um, graphic IDs in your script macro just isn't. It's not, not saying someone wouldn't do it, but it's it's not worth the time and effort. I don't think. Yeah. So where I stand on this is, is it definitely messes with the economy. Like the economy is not designed to be flooded with AFK script miners. It just isn't. Uh, I, I know it's boring. I've I've gone out and mined a bunch myself. I actually kind of enjoy it, but I'm also a weirdo that's done years of mining and Eve online. Um. But even here, I didn't go past like skill 70 before I was done mining. So I know like the, the 
people want to get around that. And you're right. You put in the capture. I'm good. But that's not the rule. The rule is you can't AFK mine at all. The capture is just there to aid the developers, you know, to give you something to work around. So now I'm going to be selfish. This was my idea. So, of course, I like it. Um, have a chance on a, re- on a colored uh, vein to actually have an ore elemental show up. And now if you're not actively watching, you're going to come back and you're dead. Now we've got miners that are that need to have combat skills, and we're actually using that mining bonus to uh, the mining bonus while uh, fighting. Okay, great. Now we add in that you weigh the miners down a little bit so they can't get around as easy and carry as much ore. Uh, the complaint there is, oh well, what about the new player who just goes around mining and doesn't want a PVM MMO VP happen? Uh, okay, what, their skills aren't as high. Okay, so the dull copper elemental will take you know a minute to kill a naked person, and it's not a challenge. But the avarite elemental that 110 mining will three shot someone unless they're you know wearing aspect and ready to fight. Yeah, I, that might be good enough, but you can script PVM pretty easy. Uh, so maybe maybe it's good enough. I, I do love any any gameplay change that makes mining more interesting. You make it more interesting, that's, then the desire to script it is, is down. Yeah, um, well, that's the idea. Instead of sitting there with it on a third monitor that's the size of a 9-inch CRT, uh, you actually have it on one of your main monitors. Or if you're like me, it's on your main monitor because I've only got the one. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, lumberjacking. There's the lumberjack squared macro out there that recalls in and it walks around an entire 40 by 40 section of woods and will chop every single tree. All right, can we just time out here and talk about Jack only having one monitor? It's 2019, bro. Get a second yeah. one. Uh, I'm looking at three right now. Yeah, I've only got one. My desk doesn't support more than one, and I'm hoping sometime in the next six months to finish my basement and get a really nice desk, and I'll have like a six monitor set up then. <laughs> oh, now you're going fully overboard, right? Oh, 100%. Uh, either go with one monitor or go with every monitor possible. Uh, make, I, I, make it I up DM, for lost uh, time. I DM an online D&D campaign, and I could not do that with one monitor. I've got shit spread across the two. I got an iPad up next to it. Like, I, I just need endless screen for that shit. No, I've, I've got two at work. I've had up to three at home before, but... Uh, two of them got broken in the move, and I just never replaced them because I had a new desk. And- uh, I don't know that we have a, a good solution to fix this. We definitely need to move on a little bit here. Uh, I, I I just I love hearing about it. I think it's awesome, um, and I would welcome any change that that helps mining and any kind of resource gathering become more interesting. Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest thing. Like it needs to be made more interesting, and I don't know what that solution is, rather than just. Band scripts, no AFK, blah, blah, blah. Make it interesting so people want to actively do it and don't want to AFK. Don't make it tedious. Make it fun. Do something with it to, to spur some activity. Yeah. I think the other thing is we need to find a way to make fishing fun because fishing is awful. Uh, it's worse than mining because at least mining you can walk around and see the world and occasionally you'll have a red Fishing you can do from town, get to 120, and it'll just take you six years unless you're doing it completely attended, of course. Yeah, uh, I did fishing at work. I can always see the screen when I'm at work, but I wasn't watching that screen all the time. Like, I, I guess, yeah. But fishing, you just sit in one spot, never move. Yep. And, I mean, on land, it's not like it's even giving you anything that'll make you money. I mean, the fish is what? A gold apiece. Even that, though, I hit uh, 69, something like that, and I quit fishing. Yeah, I think I'm at 80, and most of that's from going around boating with script fishing. All right, let's let's uh, let's move into some of our community feedback this week. So I did something a little different. I asked everyone, let us know what you want to see come to Outlands. And and with that, the floodgates were open, and we got, we got hammered with all kinds of responses. So we're, we're just going to run through these and... Uh, Briefly discuss like, you know, what the guys are saying out there. So uh, first up is Kevlar. He asked, uh, or he said, now that minis have their own rooms, any plans to make them summonable? 
Uh, being from a smaller guild, it's really hard to spot them, so summoning is the easiest way to get a kill and a boss token. Yeah, I think there was um, in the works, and, and I don't know if it was you know Owen and Lithia spitballing or something, but uh, an overall to the mini system after the main bosses, I don't know if it was uh, you know farm so much in a dungeon or if it was a special loot drop. Um, it was a special loot after. drop. Is what he had. That's why. That's what I thought. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see you know an overhaul to the mini, um, but at the same time, I think minis kind of are fun because they're the they're spawning a lot of PvP because they are so contested. You can't summon them. You have to find them on that random timer. Um, so I know, you know, a few weeks ago when I was doing them a lot with, you know, Wrecked and then Lunked, um, they were highly contested because people had to get those tokens. You know, they could summon their boss, but they couldn't do anything with the mini except for wait for that random timer. Yeah, it's the the minis are the limiting factor for the Omni. Let's be honest. Uh, BB, we have what fifteen of each main token. <clears throat> yeah, not, I shared not, I shared our screenshot to to general chat. It's ridiculous. There's, there's and that's least, not counting all the ones locked down in people's houses for decoration. Yeah, there's ten to twenty bo- of each boss token, and we have minis, but you know, there's bosses with no minis at all. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, 100% yeah that ties right into the same way. That ties right into making Omni a little better. You know, you get more minis, you have more Omni books done, so then you got to give people a reason to go to the Omni. So maybe all that's coming together, you know, Omni tweaks, uh, mini summon tweaks, uh, like all lumped in. Yeah, I think uh, I think time will tell on this one. You know, we just got our, our guild PvP patch, whatever, when we won't go into that, but, you know, that, that was a long time coming, so um, it'll be, and you're, we're see, still seeing some, you know, daily or weekly patches after that, so It'll be interesting to see what comes with the next big patch. Um, I think it was a lot of content, um, PVM, RP, stuff like that, um, that Owen alluded to when they were working on the guild and PvP patch. So I I think some good things are going to be coming down the pipeline there. All right, Jack, why don't you take the next one? All right. Got to go through my second monitor. I got to go through my windows to find it. (laughs) I've only got, well, I've got like 20 windows. Uh, so Yuki, I remember asking Luthius Owen when the server came out about being able to create a mini farm, uh, 12 by 12 or something, maybe a house deed thing. Played on Shadows of Exile back in the day. Uh, you could craft a plow, make grass turn into dirt, plant a scarecrow, uh, add water, plant reagent seeds, grow your own reagents. Could craft fencing to the border of your farm if you wanted. It seems like an expansion on the plant system. Uh, Anything that gets the plants out of my houses, I'm happy with. Yeah, I think I think this is an interesting idea. Um, Script also posted something on the forums for basically deedable plots that weren't a house. You know, if you want a blocker or something, or if you want to make a guild town or something, um, you could you could have these kind of add-on deeds that was maybe a guard tower or a garden or you know a pond or something. Um, I think the ideas are great. You know, it. Be a lot cooler than seeing a bunch of eight by eights scattering all over the place. Um, and from an RP perspective, I think it's really cool. Yeah, you combine both these ideas. Uh, a script's post is in uh, suggesting ideas. We'll have links to all this stuff too, so you can go look at it. But he's got the left screenshot, which is eight by eights, and the right screenshot is a guard tower, a little tealer hut, a, a small tiny farm, some benches. Uh, but then you give uh, players. Like the ability to actually go farm and have that tie in either either plant or something else. Yeah, I, I would eat that up. Uh, that's cool. That's like interesting new yeah. sandbox stuff. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, we'd be able to turn a BB desert in a nomad area where uh, you got nomad tent. Uh, my big question is does this count as a house on your account? I think so, yeah. You have to, so yeah. it limits the, the space. Yeah, you either you either put it as a house on your account, or maybe maybe there's something where it ties into guild, where a guild collectively can, you know, place X amount of structures, or you know, and maybe you have to set a guild house, and they can only be so far from the house, or something like that. I mean, there there's maybe some other ways to do it, but I I think it just like you said, it expands the sandbox so much, and you know, allows players to craft the world even more so than we already can. As a yeah. guy with only two housing slots, I would love the idea of a guild being able to own houses instead of a player. You'd yeah, have maybe. to, you'd have to find a way to limit it because then 
you, uh, you don't want to have all the houses owned by the guild, and now you've got 7 million houses out there that are owned by one guild. Right, yeah, maybe not so much guild, maybe not houses, but things like the guard towers and the benches and the tents that have no lockdowns and just are aesthetics, something like that. Maybe it's based on your prestige or your member count up to X amount or, or something like that. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about member count. You, then you're just going to have people making alts just to load them up, but that's okay, I guess. Right, if you cap it at, say, 10, you know, or something like that. I, I think everyone would probably hit it. But in, interesting ideas nonetheless, I think. No, I really like that. It's really cool. It would tie into the farm. You could even say, hey, you can grow X amount of reagents, but then anybody can loot them. Right, um, yeah. And it can't be some game-breaking number of reagents, 10, 20. Well, they could easily tie this into just, just make it a different kind of system. Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what, but you could... You could just start a whole new system and have farming feed it. Yeah, I, th- I think the possibilities are endless here, um, just to our imagination. Nat, you probably don't know this, but in a lot of UO servers, reagents would just spawn on the ground one like one at a time. But I always used to, first thing I did was put them on Scavenger. So as I'm running around the world, I'd get free reagents all the time, um, especially when you're first oh. starting. That's one thing I did miss on the server at launch. Oh, for sure. Uh, you'd get so many reagents to- yeah, that sounds awesome. That's that's probably how it should. That's the same as like running around a regular MMO and you know picking the the plants that are around as you as you quest. And you pick every single plant and break every chest to get in in an MMO. A little bit of breaking and entering never hurt anyone in Skyrim. All right, what's ne- what's next? Um, kind of on the same same page. Uh, Danica said she had an idea, and I I know I've seen this come up a few times. Um, as a suggestion here and on other servers, but uh, just one little idea. I've seen it on servers before. It would be cool to see a couple rental spaces in some of the towns, maybe even just stalls with a weekly gold deposit required. Serves as another gold sink as well as vending for those willing to pay the extra gold. I, I think having it be a limited rental, that way the same five people aren't locked down on them. I mean, okay, BB owns a guild house, or a, a vendor house right at Andaria. And because of that, we have prestige, a prestigious place, easy for people to shop at. But for those that came, you know, more than five minutes after server launch, they don't have one of those Moongate houses. And now they're trying to spend, you know, two million for a house. So I think an in town one that can rotate through, it, you can't have it on the same account group for the four months or whatever, that'd be really cool. Yeah, there's, I guess a couple ways you could do this. You could make it an auction system to buy them out, which I know just keeps the richer richer. Uh, but that makes it a better gold sink too, where you kind of like you bid for the slot, right? And the highest bidder gets it. Yeah, and you can decorate it for a week, and then after the week it goes back to your bank. Uh, and then you're locked out for a month. I think that would be a really cool gold sink. Yeah, I um, I, I think you're on it. Jack, where you have to be locked out for X amount of time, and it's not just that character, that account. I think you got to link it to the account group, right? So you're just not switching around. Um, I'm a little less confident about the auction because, like you said, the rich get richer. Um, I think a lot of people would be interested in this, um, not only from running a vendor, but also from buying a vendor. It kind of gets you a little safe. Granted, thieves can steal in town, um, but it kind of gives you a little more safe space to to sell and to set up your vendor and. Um, from a player aspect or a buyer aspect, you know, they might give preference to the ones that are actually in town. Um, granted they're rotating all the time. Maybe not a auction, but you could do a, uh, a raffle system like they do with the lottery. Yeah. Then you might risk someone winning it and no desire to run it, but I mean, maybe, maybe that's okay too. You could do like a, a rare item drops when one goes down and then you can either sell the item or go open your vendor up. Hell, maybe that's maybe you have to farm and you you get an item drop to get a vendor in town for a week. Um, that could be an interesting system too. Yeah, it just won't get seated until there's a spot free and the spots get freed up. You know, once a week. yeah, a, a lot of cool ideas there. Um, you know, I, one thing I will say is I'm not a fan of houses in town, um, but like vendor rentals could could be a cool system. Yeah, I think a couple of small deco items to make it your shop would be right i mean you'll still have the people that'll put the phallic symbols up with you know skill orbs and 
just have to have admins, you know, check every once in a while and ban those people or warn them or jail them or something. Probably not ban. It's a little too far. All right. So next up, we have Kelsier updated boss mechanics. Some sort of puzzle element would be neat. Something other than tank and spank. Uh, yeah, this is cool. There's really only one tank and spank boss outside of peace timers, and that's uh, Nucero, in my opinion. I think this is coming. I mean, we had Luthius on the podcast. He he knows he wants to tweak how all the bosses are working mechanic wise. Um, I I bet you he's got tons of ideas and stuff he wants to rework. I mean, he's been watching us do these same bosses for a year now, so I know it's in the work for sure in his head. Maybe not down to code just yet, but there's stuff that guy wants uh, to let us come check out. Yeah, I, I found it interesting, you know, his kind of whole process when he when he's coding systems and stuff. He has these grandiose plans, and you know, as, as time goes on, not not from lack of ability, but from lack of uh, making the se- the system understandable and easy to use, um, to just time. I think you know, he, he I think he said it himself that some of these get neutered, or Owen steps in and says, "Hey, we got to scale it back." Um, so I think he's got some grandiose plans. Um, it's just a matter of time and and time to explain it to us, you know, and, and have us uh, jump in and use it. Uh, but I, th- I think he's got some cool ideas that he'd like to go back and revisit and, and tweak and, and things like that. Now, um, BB's been working closer with CFC. We just allied them. At, I guess that's the announcement. But uh, a lot of these guys haven't done bosses. You know, Ace, you've done a million bosses. So have I. So have you, Nat. We know the mechanics. We know how to get around things. But uh, correction, I know how to not stand in fire. Oh yeah, you know how not to stand in fire. But okay, <laughs> he doesn't know how to get out of a dungeon, though. That's correct. <laughs> but uh, you've got these guys. They've never done these bosses before, and it's new and it's exciting for them. So I don't know if we need to change them up just be- for the sake of changing them. Some of them absolutely need to be tuned a little bit differently. Uh, Darkmire Mini, unless you zerg it with a piecer and use a phylactery, is just a pain. But um, the Darkmire Main with the bigger room, I've learned the mechanics now, and it's doable, and it's not uh, horrible. I mean, granted, I'm on a Dexer with 150 armor, so the bodies he throws only do one to two damage. I can't imagine what it'd be like on a mage with 20 armor. Right? Yeah, I, th- I think you have a good point there. There are still a lot of people that haven't done them. I know um, from use perspective that we've had, uh, I think, two bosses available to summon. Um, you know, and and use growing their numbers. Um, it, they're they're starting to kind of bounce back. We we had a downtime there, but. Um, you know, there, there's kind of a, a fear of going in and doing a boss with six or eight people and getting just zerged out of it by PvPers, you know, cameras, and losing everything. Um, or trying to call in a BB or a Path or Orcs or something to help. And then you lose kind of all incentive for your members because you got to split the loot 18 ways now. So I, I think there's definitely a balance there, but I think it still is a system that a lot of people haven't experienced. Yeah, uh, you could get rotating bosses. Uh, he could do things with. They're talking about bringing in the uh, rotating um, original dungeons. You could throw a new boss in, in one of those somewhere. I guess that might ruin the classic flavor of it, but uh, he could have some kind of new, like the new T8 system with new bosses. Uh, the cool part of his post here, though, is that some sort of puzzle element. You know, it, I think it's a little more MMORPG indoor UO, which is kind of cool. Uh, seeing those features trickle down into, into a twenty-year-old game. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's a lot, a lot coming, you know. And I'm just gonna kind of bridge into uh, Ocho's suggestion where he said solo, small group, and large group instances you can summon and enter, like rifts or objectives with small chance of dropping sweet deco dies, etc. If you can complete it, separate instance with a timer. I played on another server that had this, and it was very popular. More PVM content designed for solo and small groups. Um, so I, that, sorry, go ahead. T- that ties into Jaden's. How do you keep it small group and not go uh, Zerg it, or worse, get raided by a Zerg? Because T8s were supposed to be three to five people. I know we do them with 10 to 15, and a lot of that is because 
we don't want to get raided by five people. Yeah, I think T8s are interesting because the loot is so high, right? You you get a chain for completing the book, and then there's another chain in the chest or on the corpse. Uh, no, it's in yep. the chest. I think it's in the chest. It's in the chest. Right. So so your loot is so high there. Like it's one of the few places you can get chains other than the Omni. So it, the loot is so high that it's worth zerging with ten or fifteen people. Um, you know, one person gets the chain, everything else gets divvied up between the rest of them. It's 10, 15, 20 minutes maybe tops. So zerg the shit out of it, get the loot out, and be good. So I think if we could find something that is solo or small groups that has decent loot, but not something that you're like, I have to zerg this, I have to get it out, uh, you know, but to make it fun for those smaller groups. So I think this is... Uh... Oh, I forget what the name of the game is. I've never played it, but the Hellgate idea. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's he. This is kind of the Hellgate idea, and, and they've even teased what the last uh, developer debrief forever ago about bringing Hellgates to to Outlands. Is that um, Albion? Yeah, Albion. Yeah, yeah, Online. Albion. Yeah, I've never played it either. Yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, I, I've played it, and they are they are very cool. Um, it's I think that's PVM content, but you de- it definitely incorporates PvP. And it is in an instance, uh, but they kind of spawn across the world. It's cool content. I think it would fit in well with UO. Um, and they've already hinted at like being willing to bring it here. And the important thing is it's instance, but does not prevent PvP. Like it can still happen there. Right. So if I um, understand it correctly, how it works, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nat, uh, you get a drop or something that spawns a one, two, or five player Hellgate. And it can be rated by the same equal number of people. So you don't want a pure PVM group. You don't want a pure PVP group because mobs here hurt PVPers. So now you're looking at more hybrid groups, you know, Dexers, Nox Mage. Uh, up until this last patch, five tamers would wreck it, but now nerf on tamers. It wouldn't be as effective. I think uh, five more hybrid characters would probably do really good. And yeah, they I think, basically uh, fight right. it out. Yeah. Is that how it worked? Yeah, uh, I think a cooler way to do it might be might be to auto summon PVPers into it, so you're guaranteed to fight. Uh, I don't know that it's doable with the server code we have, but so you you go in with your group, and then it's going to bring another group in, and then two groups have to fight it out over it. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of ideas they could do with with instances and stuff here uh, to kind of tailor to small groups. I mean, I think the coolest thing about UO and, and run UO and serve UO is if you can code it, you can do it. You know, if you if you can come up with the idea and can code it, the the framework allows you to do almost anything. So I think the possibilities are endless. You know, it's just how much time and effort Lithius can put into it. Um, but I, I think there's there's a lot of a lot of content that could be released, and I think that's kind of what we've come to the conclusion on every one of these topics today that um you know pe- people are dying for this content um if they can release it yeah it's a good place to stop uh i you know we just wanted to kind of get the community feedback uh and, and get some topics discussed um uh, and just to highlight w- what players are are hoping uh, to see come because they're excited to talk about the ideas so we're excited to hash them out here and then you know hopefully Owen, Luthius, and Jaden listen to podcasts and and get some of these ideas. I, they got a lot of ways to get feedback. Our podcast will not be there. It's uh, it's, it's exciting to talk about. Anyways, you know, um, and I'm sure they've got great stuff in the works in the next, you know. Right, and and I will remind anyone listening that we have a lot more topics. We got a lot of feedback uh, this week. Um, we didn't get to them all. We don't want a five hour podcast, so. We'll break it off, um, but we are going to try this format again and circle back around to some of these other things that we didn't get to touch on, um, and hopefully have some some more discussion for you guys. Uh, yep, and I would say give us feedback. I mean, let us know. Do, do you hate this thing? Do you want do you want us to go back the old way? Do you want new? I mean, tell me what you think, and then we'll we'll either listen or we'll add things, adjust things too. So this uh, this can be ever evolving. Yeah, we've got a whole lot more stuff to cover. This is just the tip of the iceberg. All right, uh, with that, um, go to our website, insideoutlands.com, which I just actually recently renovated. It looks pretty nice. Uh, Join our Discord. That way you get updates, listen to us live, and and leave us uh, our guest feedback. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Have a good night, guys.